Okay, so welcome to session 97, or as it is, phase 3, season 1, episode 8, with everyone online today. Not quite as social today as normal. So, online today we have um, Dominic. Hello. Um, <coughs> so, I play uh, Peridiv, the human paladin from the Norse Pantheon. Um, Oh, pretty standard uh, paladin. Uh, generally tries to do the right thing, uh, albeit heavy-handed at times. Um, uh, I guess um, I've, I've kind of modelled him uh, in, in, in some ways off um, kind of uh, uh, a Jedi fight character, I guess. Um, and... Uh, Look, looks like uh, oh, it looks like I might be trying to take the lead tonight. Yeah, will be interesting to see what happens with that. And then uh, next one we have online today is Angus. Hi everyone, I am playing Zadrus, the total Circle Stars Druid. He's pretty uh, chill guy. Still trying to uh, find his feet after being pulled through a portal by a random dragonborn, but he's getting there. That's okay. I'm sure worse things can happen. Okay, so uh, next person up we have is Martin. Hello, Martin. Yep, you're up. Your mic's on. And it's off again. Are we there, Martin? Well, while Martin's fixing his mic... Oh, is it, no, we'll go on to Mark. All right. Well, Martin's a nice mug guy that actually um, does not like the like the rest of us. So... So uh, I'm playing the um, Bradshaw, the least loving Ultimatory. Um, Dwarven warrior, weapon master, tank, doesn't listen to Dimitri or other relatives in his family. And he's having fun with his meeting his great uncle, I think. Uh, yeah, um, you, you, you keep changing um, your family relationship. So uh, again, Mark, you might want to watch the video oh. last week about where it was detailed what it was. So, Martin's got his mic fixed. So, Martin, introduce your character. So, you're back on mute again. Hello, Martin. Hey, Martin. And we lost Mark. Checking with Okay, so I'm sure Martin will introduce himself when he gets the chance, but he's currently playing Trellin the Elven Monk. Uh, last session you had delved into Kralgar Keep to find uh, what was happening down there and try to uh, get get the blood elves and stop whatever they're doing so that they won't break into rock home and interfere with the dwarves and you were traveling with a dragonborn cleric and a um, dwarven forge master uh, who was uh, telling you about various aspects of history and what he's uh, doing with you. Last time we had it, uh, you had traveled down and encountered a bunch of traps and treasure leading to a bunch of you being damaged. 
such as Parity has 12 damage, uh, Xandros has 5 damage, Rachel has 88 damage, and Dimitri has 4. Uh, I believe that brings us to uh, you deciding what you want to do because you can't take a second long rest in the last 24 hours. You could take a short rest or you could take half a short rest using uh, Arduous Rally to try to push through and um, make a skill check for it. Um, well... I mean, unless anyone's got a convincing reason to take another long rest, I um, I I am very much in a team short rest because I have used both of my uh, wild shapes yeah. uh, to get in here. Um, I don't need the help. I'm completely fine. I just my primary utility does rely on a short rest right now. Yep, that's good. But I can go without. I still got plenty of spells. Okay, um, I could probably provide them sort of help for Bradshaw to get him. Um, Bradshaw also has lots of hit dice that he can use on a um, short rest. So if you're not going to get it back on a short rest, uh, you wouldn't need to uh, expend it. Most players do not use their hit dice for healing. Which is what you okay. could recommend that they use instead of constantly using magic to heal themselves. Mm. Yep. Okay, well. So whoever considers uh, themselves the leader of the party gets to spend five minutes, make a skill check, and see if they can uh, give everyone the benefits of a long rest in half the time. Um, Alright, well, I mean, does, does Bradshaw need to do that in order to get. Points back. Well, if you want to spend an hour, which is the usual um, uh, short rest, or mm -hmm. you can spend mm -hmm. half an hour. Okay. Oh, hang on. So, so uh, to do half an hour would require the skill check. Would require a skill check, yes. Yeah. Is that all, all right. of Australia's skill check or just the leader? Uh, just the leader. The one who's um, rallying his followers. Okay, well, I mean, but does it does it make a whole lot of difference for us right now if we wait half an hour or an hour? That's completely up to you. My theory is, but I mean, is, you know, like, is there any negative to failing the skill check? Uh, negative to failing the skill check, it doesn't work. So we just, and so I've already fail, waited half an hour and then we just end up having to wait another half an hour anyway. So yeah. if you fail it, you gain a level of exhaustion. Oh, uh, okay. and the thing we is, don't want to do that. You, you will know before you spend the um, long rest. You'll do it as you're uh, trying to talk people into stuff. Yeah, okay. Alright. Uh, My well, is full hour. Yeah, I just think we just do a full hour, normal short rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes, you, you spend an hour resting. Because sometimes you might not get that hour. A message from okay. okay, so yes, you, you spend an hour resting. Uh, who's on watch for your rest? I'll be on first watch. Uh, there's no first watch, there is. Watch. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, you, as, a, as the person on watch, will not gain the benefits of a short rest. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll do it. That's fine. Okay, so that means uh, Angus can spend a hit dice to recover his uh, five hit points if he wishes to. Yeah, why not? Well, so you get to you get to roll. Uh, so what? What? Uh, you're a druid. What's your hit dice? It's a D eight. So you get to roll a D eight, uh, and if it doesn't roll enough, you can add another D eight to it. But you yeah. need to keep track of how many hit dice you expend because you don't get them all back. That's a six. And I've noted that I've 
roll use up one of my hit dice. So back up to classic full. Yep. So you you feel yourself um heal up a bit as you rest. Uh, as we have no breakthrough at the moment and Mark seems to have disappeared, we can't actually uh, find out what he's up to. So we'll chase him up when he gets back. So after the uh, short rest, uh, you can now choose to decide uh, how you're going to proceed because the stairwell continues down further. So we're in this cellar two at the moment, is that right? You are in cellar two. For sure. All right. Uh, and 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 so we've encountered all these traps in these various little rooms and alcoves. You have. Cool. I all thought right, I'd well, at least give you a map to help represent where you were. No, that's good. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, maps are super helpful for me. Um, okay. Well, I continue on down. Um, I. I mean, I can't remember talking. About previously about whether or not I had a torch like you know lit if I'm leading the way uh, I do yep mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, well, check everything on his floor uh, you believe you have because you've broken into each of the rooms uh, you gathered a whole heap of stuff uh, I seem to recall the real uh, sort of links uh, sorry, a real uh, link type thing going on, smashing pots, uh, taking <laughs> everything out of every container. Um, yeah. Classic uh, role playing game, click on everything. Yeah. Um, uh, after we've destroyed this entire level, um, yeah, head down the stairs. Well, to be fair, the uh, level wasn't particularly uh, well looked after beforehand. Oh, that's. That makes me feel better. And this place has been abandoned, so it's not as if you're stealing from uh, uh, a active um, residence. Yeah. Okay, so what is your light source? Just the torch. Although, I mean, I'm tempted to... I'm tempted to... The problem is, I worry that... Yeah, so, so does the turtle have, um, uh, you know, dark vision? Yes, I have through my umbra silk cloak, I have dark vision. Each of you should have dark vision. Okay, so I won't though, because I'm human. Uh, it's a, there were six of these magical items. Yep. And the six characters could each have taken one. So is there a reason your character didn't take the magical uh, cloak that allows you to see in darkness without a torch? Uh, not, I, I can't remember that particular item. I don't, I'm not sure whether that was an adventure that I wasn't here for. So let's assume that if there were enough, I did take one. I did remind people about it last session. Okay. And I'll, I'll, uh, they got I'd, the session uh, before where I was, I'm not sure how many they had. Hopefully it takes. All right. Um, okay. Well, that's my life source then. Okay. So, uh, give me a stealth roll as you uh, go down the stairs. Oh, good. I'm really great at those. Um, well, you are the person in front. No, that's fair. Hey. Okay. So everyone hears the clink, clink, clink of the paladin going down the stairs. I'm sure there's um, nothing bad about that happening. No, I'm sure we're fine. I have to look on the bright side. As you walk down and start to see into the room, considering uh, you've got to wait until the spiral comes around enough for you to actually see. Uh, looking out, you see that there are uh, a room full of many doors around you. Uh, I'm just going to uh, fix that so you can actually see it. And this is also not the bottom of the uh, key.
Lots of doors. Wow. All right. Are they like um, are they like cell doors? They all look like prison cells, and all of them are open uh, as if they have been broken open. Hmm. Does it look like they've been broken outwards? They look like they they have been broken outwards. Hmm. All right. Um. All right. Uh, have a bit of investigate starting on the cells on the top left, I guess. Okay, in the top left, uh, looking in here, there's a pile of um, writing body parts, is the best way you can describe it. Body parts? Yep. Doesn't look like you can complete a body out of all the different parts. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, I just sort of work work my way through, like room by room. Mm -hmm. I go uh, going along the going clockwise. Okay, as you move around clockwise, you see that in the top uh, right is uh, some twitching corpses. Oh. Um. Okay, I attempt to do. I don't know, like a. Like a medicine check to sort of see whether I can understand, like, uh, are they twitching because they've just recently been killed, or are they twitching because they're undead? Okay. Oh, Give me a, a medicine check. Okay. Yeah. God. <laughs> Five. Five. <laughs> uh, you, you're unsure. Uh... You probably have to get um, a lot closer. Uh, you know, he's just gonna like come up beside him. Um, what on earth is going on? Like just kind of staring at it, very confused. Um, can I try for a medicine check as well? You can try a medicine check too. That's a ten. That's a ten. Well, they're humanoid. Uh, right. And they, and they're moving, but not don't seem to be doing much. This is fascinating. Um, mm. not a whole. I'm not completely sure what to do about that. Um, well, it's complete darkness, isn't it? Because we're all using dark vision. Um. Yeah. I am going to use a uh, reduced flame cantrip and just kind of illuminate, see how they react to light and or flame. Okay. Yeah, I draw my sword. So, uh, as you do, produce um, flame. Uh, the, the flame takes on a greenish tinge. Oh, so that's a gas on. Um, Is there anything else special about the flame? It was just turned green. Uh, it has a greenish tinge to it as you uh, bring it up. Uh, normally that means it's uh, burning something other than just straight oxygen. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, the room hasn't exploded, so it probably wasn't something fireable. Um, or it hasn't built up enough, or you're not close enough to it to cause a problem. Uh, and have the, so have these uh, bodies uh, reacted in any way to the light? Uh, one of them seems to be looking in your direction. Hmm. I say, uh, hello there. Are you okay? He doesn't respond. I'm tempted to just kind of leave these things be. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to walk to the other, like, bot let's go bottom right. Just... As you do so, you see something clinging. T uh, you feel something clinging to your ankle. Uh oh. Um, I'm going to, I guess, like look down. Um, flame still in my hand. Looking what is it? Uh, it's a severed uh, hand clinging clinging to your ankle. Oh, that's an immediate. I'm just going to like throw the flame straight at it. Okay. That's just an impulse of like. 
Uh, do you need me to make a spell attack? Uh, you will need to make a spell attack to hit something, yes. Okay, let's... 15? 15 is enough to hit. You hit it with your spell and it uh, bursts with uh, a green puff of uh, flame and then it goes dark. Well, I'll, I'll say... They're clearly alive enough to grab things, so be the, careful with oh, Absolutely. i say to you, I feel like there's a pretty good chance that if we stay here for much longer, we're going to be absolutely covered in um, body parts, biting, clawing, kicking, gouging, and punching. Um, I feel like maybe there's not much point staying here for much longer unless we want to spend an hour chopping up hands. Mm. As I'm going to continue towards that bottom right, could I say, corner? Yep. Yeah. Now, looking in the bottom right, you see uh, a skeleton charred with broken uh, leg bones, wearing scraps and of tattered and rotting clothing. And you see a couple of coins splintering in the remains. What kind of coins? They look to be gold coins. Okay. Nah, Zaytrus isn't that materialistic. He's not going to go charging at those. We know something else is already clearly you know, reanimating things. He's going to leave it there and continue on to the bottom left corner. Okay, in the bottom left corner, you see um, uh, a pile of hands all starting to move towards you as you uh, seem to get within their ability to sense you. Well, looks like you were right about the uh, pile of body parts. Yeah, I'm not real... You know, if 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 I if I felt like we had some sort of way to like deal with all of these permanently in one go, then it might be worth doing to sort of prevent them from attacking the next person that comes down here. But as it is, I feel like it's a it's just going to be huge time I mean, sink. I mean, you're you're a paladin. You're built for undead things. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure that there's anything I can do about. Um, just take them all out in one big go. Not not in my current build, anyway. Do paladins get destroyer or dead, or is that cleric? Because I was supposed to mix up. It depends on the paladin type. I don't know. I mean, like, I've got the spell magic. I don't know whether that's no, something that would kind of kill them. Um, I mean, throwing flames at them isn't. Well, get them one by one, but that's a bit of time soon. Um, if we just blow up the whole room, that'd be great. Yeah, I don't think we're building through movable resources. That is a really great point. Um, I think, are there any of the hands... Like, they're still moving towards us, aren't they? They are, but slowly. Mm. Very slowly. Um, Zatrus is going to do the same thing again, and he's going to hurl a ball of, you know, not a ball of flame, a flame at the closest hand. Yep, give me a uh, attack roll. That is a... 16. Okay, you hit it. You seem to hit a big hairy hand as you uh, fling it. And as it burns up, you hear a uh, tinker of something hitting the floor. Alright, what is it? Hard to tell because the pile of hands are going over it. Okay. Um, how... Okay, so the pile of hands is going over it. How far would you say I am to the pile of hands? Or how far away is it? Well, they are about 10 feet from you. Moving about 5 feet around. Mm 
I'm just going to take a walk back. 10, yeah, let's go 10, 10 feet back. Mm -hmm. So now it's about 20 feet between me and the pile. Yep. Um, how many would you say are in the pile? How many hands? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, give your character a perception roll. See if you can count. Fourteen. Fourteen. Counting through them, you seem to count at least uh, uh, eleven hands and what look to be uh, another eight attached to arms. All right. Look, I can, I can, I can turn undead for one minute, which I guess might make them all like flee to the sides of the room or something temporarily. But how hard is that for you to get back? Uh, how many, how many divinity bloody slots do we even have here? Channel divinity. Um, as an action. Hmm. So it's a channel divinity thing. It hmm. seems to suggest that maybe I could do one per short or long rest. Yes. Yeah, I save, suppose. save that reset. Yeah. Save that then. Uh. Okay, so how would you like to deal with this? Look, I mean, I'm happy to start chopping up hands with my sword if necessary. It feels foolish, though. Yeah. Or you could just yeah. stomp it on him. Uh. Yeah, why not? You go for a stomp fest through the hands? Um, yeah. I'll just do a jig on them. Okay, give me an acrobatics check for your characters. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, 15. Uh, oh, acrobatics is flat roll. Oh, net 20. Okay, between oh. the two of you, you manage to crush <laughs> and stamp through all the hands. <laughs> Basically, because the hands made it difficult terrain, because they kept trying to grab you as you were stamping on them. Uh -huh. Takes you about ten minutes, but you manage to get through um, stamping through the hands. <laughs> Zeku's is going to look for that thing that dropped off the first hand, whatever that was. That would be an investigation roll for your character. Another nat twenty. Okay, oh looking God. through, you find a. A small ring. Any what kind of ring is it? Solid metal, or is there a gemstone? There in is it? a gemstone in it, so it's not the one ring. Oh. Damn it! Um, what gemstone in it? It has uh, what appears to be a cracked ruby. Cracked ruby. I'm just gonna slip it into that one. One of my pouches mm -hmm. and can check if there was anything else of value that dropped from the many uh, assorted hands. Looking through them, there doesn't seem to be anything else there. Okay. Is that skeleton in the bottom right still where it was? It is. It didn't move. Didn't move at all? Okay. Um, is that you just kind of you know, slip the ring into little pouch, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, and gesture towards the stairs, onward. Mm -hmm. sounds, sounds good. Uh, I've, I've all danced out. Alright, we head down. Okay. I shall change your map over. It would be easy if I could just go next page, but... You seem to have come to the bottom of the stairs. Mm. 
<coughs> Looking right. in um, here, it looks like it has been recently used, as in the last um, uh, 24 hours. Blood stains the floor where humanoid limbs and fingers are scattered. Four human skeletons are stacked in one corner of the room. And manelevant torture devices line the west wall. A dark-skinned humanoid is still attached to one of the devices, its face seeming to plead and beg for freedom from the pain. It is unclear if they are alive or dead. All this is uh, overshadowed by the sight of uh, creatures surrounding the humanoid. You see uh, a... Uh, robed figure with four zombies gathered around a small table with a number of vicious hooked and barred in instruments. Some glisten with surgical splendor while others are dull rusted tools of torment. What uh, would you okay. Have they yeah. noticed us yet? It would be, at this point, we would say initiative for you. Oh, no. okay. Okay. Seventeen. Okay, just give me a sec to set up stuff. Mm -hmm. Mainly because we are missing quite a few people. Uh, sixteen. Okay, so... Sixteen for parity. What did Xandos get? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Okay, so Parative is up first. What does Parative want to do? Is uh, in the background Trellon doing anything? Uh, hopefully uh, you're still with us. Um, okay, well, step one is like turn um, dead, I think. Yep. Um, and that's I think that's my whole turn well is it an action I, I believe it is an action it. yeah then it will be, you still get a bonus action and your movement alright uh, okay um, I'll so uh, oh, hang on so so when I do that though mm -hmm. um so those zombies have to take a wisdom saving throw, or it's turned. Um, then, oh, wait a section, sorry. And what's the DC of your um, uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Well, they rolled an 18, and another run dead in the region also rolled an 18. Boo. So, okay. I don't think they are worried about your uh, un undead turning. Oh, that's upsetting. Um, Alright, my bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on uh, my turtle friend. Mm -hmm. So... So he can't attack and can't be attacked. Uh, hang on a second. Um, no, I think it's just. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, no, that sucks. Sorry, I thought it was um. Uh, not really have anything that I can do with my bonus action. You could draw your weapon. Because very few people run around with their weapon out all the time. That is true. I did say I drew my weapon earlier and then didn't put it back away again, but it's fair to assume that when I was going downstairs, I wasn't holding it. Um, Alright, yeah, I draw my weapon, so I've got my longsword and my shield equipped. Um, and I guess I'll just move into attack range with this robed figure as well. Okay, you move into attack range with them. Okay, so that brings us to Xandros. What would Xandros like to do? I 
think Xandros is going to assume starry form. So I, uh, you notice his you know, kind of earthy green uh, shell, a kind of deep uh, navy speckled with stars and nebula-like symbols. Um, he's going to take on the archer form and is going to make a bonus action attack against the hooded figure. Which I just quickly um, Actually, I'm going to do Guiding Bolt first. So, that is a nat 20. Yep. So, uh, Guiding Bolt will use one of the three casts. So, that is 46. Are we. Do I roll twice or am I doubling the dice? Uh, for. Crit what? Uh, yeah. You got a critical thing? Yeah. Then if you got a critical thing, you. You generally get more from it as a player if you double the dice, but normally critical, you do, it's better to say just uh, double the result because it's a lot less rolling. Alright. Uh, well, then that is a. 30, and what's my modifier? Just had a plus wisdom. 33. 33 to hit, or damage. Oh, sorry, that's right. Oh, sorry, nat, nat 20, uh, and then 33, uh, 30 damage. And you're firing it at the zombies or the uh, cloaked the figure? The hooded figure. So 33 damage. Okay, so he does take 33 damage. Is there any type of um, type of damage? Uh, it is a ra it is radiant damage, and the hooded figure is now glowing. The next attack against them has advantage. Uh, before the end of my next turn. And I'm now going to use my bonus action to do my... Archer form track, which escapes me at the moment. Uh, which is a dirty 20 to hit. Dirty 20 to hit. Uh, just checking. A dirty 20 will hit. Alright, and then this is. Uh, 15 damage. And what type of damage is that one? Radiant. Radiant. Okay. Radiant. I have to check because different types of damage will have different effects. Mm. And they're not glowing anymore. They're not glowing anymore. Okay. So, uh, the, the cloaked figure starts casting a spell. Does the Paladin have Attack of Opportunity? Yes. Does he have Mage Slayer? No. Uh, I think all he needs is Attack of Opportunity to be, to be able to uh, hit a person doing a manipulative effect. Uh, I'm a, I'm I'm a 100% sure of yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly check and see. Do you mm -hmm. know what level you get it? Uh, okay, I just look up fighter because I know fighter has it. I thought Mage Slayer was a feat. Actually, they seem to have lost that one. Uh, So did you get it from a feat or a ability? What I don't like, I, I don't have a mage slayer. No attack of opportunity. Oh, uh, 
I don't think he did, but... I think it's thing about Judy is, is, uh, is just... I think, um... Yeah, it's only when they move in. Okay. Or, sorry, away from you, or, like, through So, in or, which case, then, as you don't have the uh, Mage Slayer, which was the other way of triggering it, uh, I was just seeing if you had other ways of having an opportunity attack besides movement. No, nah, uh, I don't think okay. I do. So, you see a sphere of poisonous, sickly green fog uh, appear around uh, all of you. And you get to have a constitution saving throw. So, uh, I'll give you plus four to all your saving throws. Okay. But you might also even get some sort of uh no nah, that's it yeah okay that's it so it's just five plus four okay yeah well that is a 22 a 22 mine is a 28 28 okay so Both of you take uh, seven points of poison damage. Gotcha. And everything's gone dark because you're inside a green cloud. You have lost your ability to see things. Alrighty. Okay. Okay, so uh, you do hear uh, the sound of the zombie shuffling. That's not ideal. No, it is not. I brace for the inevitable zombie attack from the mists. Hmm. Okay, the first one. Uh, swings in at uh, Perative, hitting an armor class of 13. Miss. Second one comes swinging in at Xandros, hitting an armor class of 22. Uh, would I be able to see this zombie at all? No. Okay, uh, no, that hits. Dealing a massive uh, two points of damage, bludgeoning damage. Hit by oh. A second one comes in to attack Perative, hitting an armor class of 20. Uh, miss, again. A second one comes in and attacks Xandros, hitting an armor class of 9. Miss. Then it is Perative's go. Alright, I am going to attempt to dispel magic. But first, you must the... make a fortitude saving throw at the start of your turn. All right, let's do that. Oh, uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. You take another seven points of poison damage. Oh my god, this is getting bad quick. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I attempt to cast a spell magic on that. Yucky stuff. Yep. What uh, spell level do you cast it at? So, only casting it at level three. So. Okay. So that means there's going to be a dispel check. Mhm. Mm I'll make your dispel check. Okay. So it will be based on. So what? 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 Will that just be? You don't know what the DC is because you don't know what level of spell it is. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about what what it will be. Will it be my? It's oh. it's normally your proficiency bonus plus eight plus mm -hmm. your uh, ability uh, for casting spells. Yeah, so you just use your yeah your ability check for. So I think that's charisma. Yeah, I think it's charisma. Okay, so all right, well I'll just roll. Especially add, especially add your spell attack bonus to the d twenty roll. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Alright, uh. Where is it? Let's go. Uh, 21. 21. Okay. So. Just reading to make sure what we're going to write this values. Make an ability check. Okay, so it's uh, only add your ability, not proficiency, and not eight. Okay. So it's, oh, so it's, only, my, it's only my ability score. Yeah, your ability score only. Uh, okay, 12. 12. Okay, so now, now it makes sense for the DCs they did. Otherwise, you would yeah. never fail. Okay, yeah. so, uh, yes, you, you do it, and the green stuff is still around you. Yeah, fuck. And I believe that is your action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which That's then brings well. us to Xandros. Xandros uh, gets to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Uh, do I still get that plus four from... Well, he hasn't moved yet. So, yep. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, so you also take seven points of damage. It will be death by a thousand cuts the way this is going. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if I can't see, I can't use. And I am. You know what? I'm going to also try to spell magic at. Fourth level. Mm -hmm. Give me a dice roll. Plus my no, that's a fail. That's a ten. <laughs> okay, so oh, two, hell. two dispel magics, mm. and uh, you've managed not to get the spell. Uh, in that case, I am going to... That's two level spells of turn. Let me just double check. Do I have to be able to see? Which spell are you using? I'm using my archer, because I'm still in my archer form. I don't need to be able to see the target. I can just make a ranged spell attack. So, I know it's probably going to be a disadvantage, but I haven't moved. I'm going to try and hit the same spot I hit last time. Mm -hmm. I believe concealment adds something else to it as well. I'll just quickly look that up. Do -do. I actually thought you were going to drop the uh, spell, so I didn't look up concealment. Oh, it's not a uh, spell, it's a use of my wild shape. No, the, uh, because he is concealed. Oh. And it's finding the right word that they use to describe uh, that. Because he's considered um, hidden from you. Mm. Unseen. It's so it's always fun when it run, runs you into different areas of the book to say, see this section, then see this section. Mm -hmm. So I was actually looking for unseen was the key word. Um, and it would be great if it was actually listed as uh, unseen. Because we're trying out a different rule set that has a few extra abilities in there, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure we get it right for you. Okay, so unseen attackers. So it's just disadvantage. So you can attack with disadvantage. Okay, attack with disadvantage. That is a 22 to hit. A 22 to hit, you still hit. Perfect. Uh, so that'll be 
was it? Then my two D eight plus three plus seven. Twelve damage. Twelve damage. Okay. So that sucks to be him. But on his turn, he decides to uh, use your uh, stuff as well to uh, cast a spell on the paladin. So the the paladin gets to make another Constitution check. Um, thirteen. A thirteen. Oh, I am. No, sorry, that's not right. Uh. Uh, 18. 18. So, uh, the paladin feels himself start to dry up as he is bathed in uh, necromantic energy. So you take 20 points of necromantic energy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Then you have the two uh, zombies trying to attack you. They're, they are not mm -hmm. flanking and providing no bonus to each other. Though so one of them does critically hit you. Oh, okay. And I'm assuming a 17 does not hit. A 17 does not hit. Okay, the one who crit you does uh, 14 points of damage. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous that I rolled a uh, maximum on the dice twice God. in that attack. And then the two attack uh, Xandros. One of them is a... Uh, hits a tw armor class of 20 and the other one misses. Assuming one 20 hit. hits. Yeah. And the 20, uh, the one that hit armor class 20 does 5 points of damage to Xandros. Okay. We're not getting it up. Death by a thousand hearts. And then Parativ gets to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> okay, 24. 24. You take another 7 points of poison damage. Um, getting pretty close to dying here. Okay, uh, what would you like to do? I'm quite tempted to run away at this point. Um, unless I use my action at just expending an absolute bucket load of lay on hands points to heal myself. How are you going health wise? I've got I've got plenty. I've got uh, eighty one, and I have a way to heal you uh, mid combat, but it will mean sacrificing my damage output by transferring from archer to chalice. And can you do that without seeing him? Uh, that's what we're about to find out. I think I can. Most things uh, in saying target require you to know what you're attacking. Everything's considered hidden at this stage, so. Uh, Constellation of Light giving, uh, of Life Giving Goblet appears on you. Whenever you cast a spell using a spell slot that restores hit points to a creature, you or another creature within 30 feet of you can regain hit points equal to 2d8 plus your wisdom modifier. My presence is healing. Yep. So, in which case, uh, then you don't have to worry about actually uh, seeing that. Yeah. Although I think it might use up my bonus action and my only. Combat healing spell is a bonus action. Um, oh, no, it's just a, it's just something that happens whenever I heal. So that's excellent. So is that something you're going to be able to actually do on your next turn, though? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, I guess I'll risk just attacking now. <laughs> okay. So you you will be attacking with disadvantage. Alright, 
know, there's like, I don't know whether I just built this guy poorly or what, there's like nothing that I can do as a bonus action. Like, my bonus actions are literally just wasted every turn because it just seems to be nothing that fits into the bonus action category. Well, I'm, um, I'm in the middle of updating the weapon mastery part on the site. When it's finished, you will have a multitude of bonus things you can do from increasing your defense to having extra attacks. Oh, right, okay. So, weapon um, mastery is built around utilizing your action and your bonus actions in combat. Okay. Alright, uh, well, I'm just going to attack, yes, yeah, so I'll attack at disadvantage. Yep. So, um, so is it, like, so it's my proficiency bonus plus, well, it's because I know that last, last, um, last time I was definitely using, uh, much lower at, at uh, attacks than I should so have been. So it's your proficiency bonus by two because you're an expert with the weapon. Oh, right, okay. Plus right. your ability modifier. Okay, alright. And uh, I believe you've got a magical weapon, so it adds a plus one on top of that. Yeah. Okay, so it's a disadvantage. Uh, uh, I... Uh, 18? 18 is a hit. Okay, perfect. Alright, so I'm using a improved Divine Smite on that attack as well. Yep. Um, so I'm just using up a... Uh, I guess I'll just use a second level spell slot for that. So it'll do... Um, and I also, I also feel like last time I was attacking with not enough... Uh, of the eating with not enough dice, so I think I'm doing one d eight just for the sword. One d eight for um, the sword, and, and then three d eight extra dice for the bonuses for one from being magical, increasing your ability to hit things, and yep. two from your um, training. Okay, and then I've got another plus three from the level of the one spot, so a total of. Uh, six, if I'm not wrong about that. Oh, that's not a bad thing to have, and that that's where you're noticing that combats go a lot shorter when you're using things you're skilled at. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing applies uh, to the magical implements increasing the amount of damage cantrips do. Yeah. Uh, Alright, I hit him for 35. You hit him for 35. Okay, there is a uh, shriek... Oh, for what it's worth, a lot of a lot of that was uh, um, radiant, but um, that may or may not make any difference to you. There, there is a shriek, and uh, suddenly the room clears up as you see uh, four bodies on the ground and an empty room. Oh, well, that was lucky. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, well. Um, all right, I stabbed the robe a couple more times for good measure. Uh, you feel happy that you've managed to uh, deal with this uh, creature of benevolence uh, who was obviously quite a spellcaster. Yeah, I feel good that I didn't die as well. Um, Alright, well, uh, I, I approached the... Um, I'm not too concerned about that, about the robes or anything. Yeah, I approached that the creature that looked like it was sort of in the process of being tortured and and see if I can ascertain whether it's still alive. Okay, so it appears to be a blood elf uh, that has been bled out. For the oh, irony. Okay. Yeah. Is it it's right. definitely dead? Uh, it's definitely dead. Uh, okay. Though uh, she would have survived if you had have, uh, gone to her and healed her first, or ranged healed her. She was at the oh, uh, point of dying I as see. you came in. Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, and I revivify her. Revivify? Mm. Okay, looking it up for you now, because if you can, that might give you a, a use of stuff where you can then rest up and see what happens. Uh, I would like to ask guidance. <laughs> Always guidance. Revivify. Okay, yes. 
Uh, and I'm assuming your character's happy to spend the 300 gold worth of diamond dust. Or diamonds. Hmm. How much money do I have? You should have, a you should have had access to a couple of thousand, but uh, it's up to you if uh, how many uses of this you would have of the spell. You wouldn't have more than five. Yeah. Um, I think so. I think I use that. Uh, I think I do that. It's not often I get a chance to bring someone back to life, so we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, she starts to cough and uh, manages to uh, start breathing again after you thought she might have died. Um, I... Oh, look, I mean, you should... She's probably not in any state to talk at the moment. Um, so... Um, but it's one of the few I'm times... I'm going to two birds, one sign, yes. yes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to... Uh, cast Healing Word mm -hmm. on her. Trying to, you know, obviously heal her a bit so she can talk. Um, still in my starry form. And so... The Paladin, or well, first things first, she... Regains. Oh, I just had it lost it. Are we hearing the word? She regains seven hit points, and Paladin gets nine. Perfect. Thank so you. the Paladin recovers oh. nine, putting him on fifty-eight damage. Um. So I'm now up to twenty-three hit points. Oh, okay, you were close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I have Revivify as well. And so. just so you know, that was a cloud kill spell that was cast on the party. So yeah, I did, I did much like that spell. It was a level 5 spell. I was about to ask, what level of spell was it? it? It was the minimum level to cast it, which was 5. But he had okay. a second one he could have dropped if you had have, uh, knocked out the first. Oh Jesus Christ! Mm. Oh, far out. And yeah, he cast. He also really cast tough. a blight on you as well. That's what did the most yeah. damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eight d eight damage. Ooh. Oh my God. And you halved it. So when you took the uh, twenty points oh, of damage, right. it would have been forty if you didn't roll well. Oh, also, I actually saved you against that. Okay, good. You did. <laughs> uh, and you and, you and all of you saved against the cloud kill. Mm. So oh, so still seven damage even saving against it. Far yeah. out. Mo most area effects are unless you unless it's a reflex save, uh, you take full damage. I take half damage on a save, but if you have evasion yeah, right. on a reflex, you can negate that, and other char uh, characters can neg negate the damage they take. Amusingly mm. enough, uh, uh, other characters in the storyline are immune to poison, so that wouldn't have affected them. Yeah right. So you yeah, also yeah. find a. Uh, skull carved of ebony mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the robes. Can I identify what kind of skull it would be? Uh, it, it's not a skull of a creature. Oh, okay, so it's just like a. It looked like it was into the shape of a skull. It looked like it was a uh, amulet. Uh, can I roll uh, an arcana check to see if there's anything like still magical about it, or? Well, you'd expect that there's to be something magical with it. Well, can I roll to identify what sort of the magic vibe it's giving? Okay, give me a uh, make it. Uh... Knowledge religion, so religious check. Never mind. That was an out one. Okay, what would you like to tell everyone it is? Mm. This right here, oh, it's a shame. It's a shame Dimitri's not here. Tell him it's a magic amulet of, I don't know, awesomeness. <laughs> um, I think it's just a rock. Zedra is very proudly going to like pick it up and hold it away. He's wearing a rock around his neck. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's super weird. Yeah, these blood elves, man. It's weird. Yeah, it's just weird nonsense. Like, 
He's probably trying to get blood from a rock. Am I right? <laughs> anyway. And that is um, how a lot of that works out. <laughs> uh, all right. I... Um, hang on. So... How's so the blood looking? Yeah. How's the... The elf that we've rescued. Now, she is uh, looking like she's going to make it. Uh, covered in lots of scar tissue. Yeah, right. Uh, so basically, when you magically heal something, it's it doesn't remove wounds. It basically mm. uh, accelerates yep. the healing of it. So if you forget to take an arrow out of a person when you heal them, the arrow is healed into their body. Very gruesome. Very yeah. gruesome. So we've had a few people say, uh, I, I want to fix my broken nose before you heal me, because otherwise you heal it as it's broken. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, having a right. uh, look amongst the stuff here, uh, you think that the robed figure was a necromancer. Mm. And the uh, ebony skull that you uh, have what, was what uh, that creature was wearing as a poltron. So, a shoulder uh, piece. Oh, okay. So I might be part of a larger thing. Uh, no, it's um, not. It's just a rock. What are you talking about? That's just yeah. a rock. <laughs> okay, so. what, what, how, how did you investigate that? Uh, I used a religion, or religion check. I'm rolling that one. So uh, uh, Zaytra just kind of like looked at it and was like, that's not magic. That's That's just a rock. Do you mind if I have a quick look at that rock? I mean, it's it's just a rock, but go for it. No, no, I just, um, you know, before I became a paladin, I thought about getting into a career in geology. So, um, you know, it's just something I dabble in. But I just do a, you know, quick religion check on it. So, uh, you see on that picture there, on the shoulder, there is a skull. That's exactly mm -hmm. what he's talking about, of being just a rock. Yeah, okay. All, right. All I'm seeing is a rock. What are you talking about? That's. It is a pretty spiky rock, but I do get a 14 on religion check. My religion check. I made my geology check. <laughs> you think it is uh, definitely some form of magical item, uh, right. and that it probably is part of a uh, larger set of items. Okay. Yeah. Um. It. it I, I think. I think you. You're probably right in that it's just the rock. But do you mind if I just keep a hold of it for the time being? I mean, I guess you, you can keep this rock. I'm gonna keep the next valuable rock we find. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Um. Hey, Uh, I ask this. Uh, blood elf. If did you say it was a she? It was a she. Um, if she sort of knows, you know, how she got, like, into this situation. Well, uh, she was the rear scout of the, uh, elves retreating into the tunnels. And okay. she obviously didn't go fast enough because she was caught by this foul necromancer and his minions. How curious. Um, does she know... Has she got to here? Like, is there a way out? I can't. I can't I'll go look at the map. No, oh, there is a way out. Yeah. What's? Do you know what's down that tunnel? Ah, uh, yes. He says the Shadowlands. It leads to the land of the Red Sun. Which you know from Dimitri and the other characters, they don't want to go back there. All right, we got to go back there. <laughs> think there's no other choice, and I mean, they're suddenly really quiet on that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean you know like if we've come this far in this direction anyway um, do I mean do we have an option to go back you do have options to go back if you wish to okay. um, and you can continue on because uh, the uh, dwarf mire believes that the threat hasn't been stopped, though he does think you might have 
uh, dealt with uh, one of the issues that they, one of the reasons they abandoned this keep. Okay. The necromancer was most likely here before the blood elves. Mm. Yeah, right. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really mm. know what to do in this I mean, situation. I mean, Angus the player is looking at, but okay, clearly that's a part of a set, and you continue onward and there's probably only more parts to it. But mm. Zagros has determined that that is just a spiky rock. Um, yeah. So... I think... I think Zagros is going to kind of like unshackle the Blood Elf. Yep. Set her free. Mm-hmm. And kind of let, if she wants to run, she can run. If she wants to accompany us and get, you know, a bit of revenge. Um, well... So did, uh, Mark, did you suggest, did you suggest earlier that, you know, uh, that there was potentially be an opportunity to rest? There is potentially an opportunity to rest. You, you believe you have cleared the threats out of this tower, and six appears to be a uh, man-made hole in the wall, uh, built to dump waste from the torture chamber, and it's big enough to squeeze through with a pile of bricks next to it, so you could probably wall that up for safety while you rest. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. You can feel cold air coming into the room from there, and uh, looking through, you can see a gigantic misshapen skeleton pushing a bone cart. Through, oh, through the... through six. Yeah, through through the hole, which is six. Oh, boss. Alright, well, I mean, I think that we... I'm quite interested in going that way eventually, but I think that for the time being, maybe we'd need to take that opportunity to rest. Yeah, I think you could probably use a bit of rest and relaxation. Um, yeah. Zagreus is largely fine. Like, I've got enough spells. Um, and still got another use of my wild shape. Um, I'll just... Hmm... I think we sh- probably should rest, even yep. if not for us, but if for the the blood elf to recover her strength. Yep, she's not going anywhere at the moment, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, so. Alright, what's well, the plan then? Long rest. Well, I don't think it's been long enough for us to long rest. Well, that would be where you rest for about oh, okay. 18 hours to get your long rest. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, no, it's, um, it's not, not a bad thing, just that uh, you can't get the benefits of a long rest in the same uh, 24-hour period. Yeah, no, no, I'll get yeah. the oh, sorry. Um, how long do you reckon, how long would it take to wall up six and do, like, a good job of it? We've got time, so we're going to, like, really do this well. You, you do have a couple of uh, artisans with you, so you could probably wall it up in about an hour. Okay. We could wall it up in an hour, or Zagreus could be extra and just stone shake it closed. Um, and you know what? Zagreus loves to show off uh, just a little bit in a, a little bit of a humble brag. So, um, so you, uh, you may end up walling, undoing your uh, wall later on if you want mm-hmm. to go out that way. Good point. Uh, then let's just spend an hour actually doing it. Keep the Keep the stone shape for when we need to close something up quickly. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. Okay. So you spend an hour doing so, and we'll give each of you an investigation roll. I mean, just to be clear, I, I, I'm hoping that the dwarves do most of this work, but, um, mm. you know, I'm hoping to see for us. Well, you do yeah. have a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, master crafter with you. Uh, that's a 14 on my investigation check. So you find him telling Bradshaw most of the things he needs to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess 17. Okay, so uh, while they're doing that, uh, 
you have um, Parative find what appears to be a uh, eye on a necklace. Awesome. Doesn't actually appear to be a real eye, but it has a look of uh, realism to it. Oh, so I think I found another rock over here. Um, all right. I mean, I, I, I attempt to sort of figure out what it is. Um, the elf says uh, the uh, necromancer used that to uh, send off some sort of teleportation in the level above. Teleportation? That's where all the body parts were coming from. Oh. How curious. Says, um. If you uh, look at the walls in magic, you'll see a uh, rune in each room. Yeah, right. Going around the dungeon, and he would walk in and touch the eye to the rune in some sequence. So it's a, it's a ritual that takes about uh, 10 minutes to cast. So, hang on, so, so was he, so was he using it to just send his hands and other bits and pieces up to the other level, or was it something a bit more complex than that? Uh, he would disappear and come back days later. Oh. Okay. Yeah, right. Stargate, got it. Um. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a bit beyond this paladin's body understanding of magic. As far as I'm concerned, no. the gods do it all for me. Well, um, is going to take that amulet, um, and while I've got time, try and kind of suss out how it works. Get my idea of like the runes dotted throughout the rooms. Sounds good. Okay, having a look at it, uh, you write down the letters for what you see in uh, room B, uh, dungeon level 1. Mm -hmm. As you uh, look around, in, in the cells going from the top uh, cell all the way around in a circle, it seems to uh, write out as, uh, Few judge my quartz block sphinx. And the entire uh, level radiates conjuration magic. Okay. Um. So she's just kind of like kind of taking notice of all of the letters and bring it back down to the blood elf and ask if she knows. What any of it could mean? Uh, she does not. She uh, only heard him uh, uh, call out uh, the Ossuary Collective as he was um, uh, touching things. I'm drawing a blank here. Okay, give me an insight roll for your character. Because your character might not be drawing a blank. Yeah. But you might roll one as well. Uh, 19. 19, okay. So, uh, hearing from what the Blood Elf said, the writing on the walls and the fact that he was touching things, you think if you spell out your destination and touch the eye to it, uh, you may teleport there. Alright, perfect. Um, Zedrus is going to come down and... Where are we actually trying to go? Is... I probably should have asked this earlier, this is in characters. It's like, where are we actually 
trying to go. I don't. I know Myra has said we're trying to purge some darkness or some evil, but where are we trying to go? Yeah, I don't, that's a good question. I don't know that we have a, you know, a, a sort of immediate destination. Um, Not that you know of, but you, but you could probably travel to many places. So it's a case of like, you know, if you kind of, like if you write these runes, either these runes or different runes on any wall, you could use the eye to potentially help or you don't believe that works that way. You believe it, the eye is specific to this room. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Hmm. Is Adrian's going to turn to the Blood Elf? Did he ever bring anyone with him, do you know, when he teleported? Or was it always him? He would, take, he would take whoever was in the cells at the time. Oh. Okay. Mm. He didn't always come back with people. He occasionally came back with um, uh, other torture subjects. Well, this How is do you spell your home? Blood Elf. She uh, gives you a, a spelling that has uh, uh, G's and um, Z's in the uh, letters. Quite a few different... Um, uh, it, it sort of sounds very Aztec uh, style okay. in it. It's a very, very long um, name. And as you uh, look at the letters on here, you realize you're missing a couple of the letters to go there. Mm. Yeah. Such as you can't travel back to the Etruagan clans because there's no G. Okay. Maybe dwarves yeah, you didn't you believe in the my, What is it? If you judge my quartz sphinx. If uh, you there? judge my quartz lock sphinx. There is a G in there. Mm. Oh. I actually can't say that, but okay. I'm about to bring it up. Uh, there we go. Okay. So the other letters you have to play with to spell out the name. Oh, just so, Drop those down. Nothing says you can't use the same letter more than once. Yeah. It's a polygram. So you got that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So yes, you can think of many places you could potentially travel to. You could even travel back to Durakin. Or Durakin City, as the case may be. Mm. So are, we, are we thinking that we're going to try to uh, leave using the eye? Or... Is this just an experiment at the moment? If you can discover how to return, then uh, you will have a way of coming and going from this location to various places. Mm. Mm. And it gives you another um, optional base of uh, transit, especially if you can keep that area safe from other interference. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I guess ultimately the, like, the necromancer's way of keeping us safe was the room full of hands. Yeah, mm. most people wouldn't want to stay in that room and examine the walls closely. No. Mm. Right, well, um... I don't know, I... 
should like should we just rest and then you know consider you know whether we're gonna go through this area uh, uh, passage six or um, it also depends on if you guys have um, mass travel or teleportation spells because you could rest I need trees do you need trees I need trees for my mass the transport via plants. Okay. So the only thing we're missing is a V and an H. So. Mm. Not so just. I'm not going to have Valor anytime soon, anyone? No, damn. It does have a H, it doesn't have a G. Because Sphinx is S-P-H-I-N-X. Oh. Never mind. It was G was the noticeable missing number, uh, letter. Oh, okay. And V. And V. G and V. Yeah. So, you could potentially uh, dash back to a place of stuff and see how that works. Or you could do a close by location and come back again. But you have discovered that there is a tree outside the keep itself. Mm -hmm. Which you can use as a way to get back if you uh, learn it. I... Doesn't well, take is holding the, the eye, so I think that's a good idea. So, I need somewhere... There's ages doesn't really know many places. So, uh, I don't know if we can. So, yes, you, you can uh, get to know the tree outside. You do know a tree near where you um, live um, mm. in the Achorgan clans. So, you can get back there at any time you need to. But learning the tree here is basically just going up and, in, uh, and uh, uh, spending a little bit of time knowing it. Yeah. All right. Zayja's going to do that. He's going to take the eye with him, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not because he doesn't trust you, but because he doesn't trust the people. He'll look down here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go check out that tree. Okay. okay. You, you have a choice of about ten in uh, near the keep that were hidden from you previously. Mm, what's... I'm going to go with like the mightiest looking tree. Okay, yeah. you find the biggest one. It is uh, about half your width. But it would still be able to open up and allow you transport. Perfect. I get to know my tree. Okay, it doesn't take you too long, and you believe you can find this tree from any other tree now. Perfect. And as you notice, the tree itself seemed to have grown about a foot in height since you introduced yourself to it. I'm going to wander back down. As you wander down, this place doesn't feel as oppressive as it was when you first came in. Okay. All the moving... Uh, uh, all, all signs of the undead creatures seem to have uh, turned to dust in the uh, time it's taking for you to brick up and yeah. uh, go outside and come back in again. Perfect. Uh, in that case, now that I know that there's not going to be anything undead, I am going to go back to that body and take those coins. Okay. Now, as you go back to that body, uh, What is your passive perception? Uh, my passive perception Which is 8 is plus your perception bonus. 8 or 10? 8. D&D uses 8 as its base bonus. 15. 15. Okay, just as you're about to reach the body, uh, you see that in the dirt uh, is... Uh, glyphs that seem to spell out explosive. Uh, I prepared explosive runes this morning. Alright, uh, I'm not going to touch that. 
it's not the first time you've uh, come across traps that were left to uh, hit the unwary and use fire to mm. do so. Yeah, but except this time it wasn't a tripwire, so I noticed it. You did. And it was also um, uh, needed uh, a bit of magical insight to see it. Um. Okay, so you can choose to disable it if you wish to. Yeah, I'm going to try to disable it. Um, would that be Arcana or just a... In this case, it would be a thievery check. Thievery. With the uh, understanding that if you uh, fail to meet the DC of the uh, slide uh, rune, you send off the you set the rune off. Okay, so uh, slide of hand using the five E. Mm -hmm. I think that is correct. Just checking to see the skills. Slide of hand will work, or thieves tools if you have it. I do not have thieves tools. Just Slow hand. That's a 13. That's a 13. Okay, so you then get to make a reflex saving throw as a pillar of flame comes up around you. Yeah, this is bad. Oh, 18. 18. Okay, so. So you take uh, 14 points of fire damage. So you're now on 14 uh, damage. Everyone else is healed up from their uh, long rest. Mm -hmm. Assuming you guys had uh, a long rest at that stage. Aren't yeah, you? I'd say we would. Actually, you hadn't. You were talking about where you're going to do, do oh, the long yeah. rest. So that means that makes it uh, 35 damage to you then. Total. Yeah. So yes, you are able to um, gather up uh, what appears to be five coins all up. Oh, they really worth it. And you realize that they are gilded copper coins. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the consequences of my own actions. Um, Alright, Zedra's so gonna come back down. And so slightly singed with his three, was it five copper? Five, five and, uh, copper gilded coins. And you do know that in the uh, nation you're traveling in, that's a uh, uh, really harsh crime to be carrying around with you. <laughs> For a nation of merchants, um, messing with the currency is about the worst thing you can do. I'm not going to tell anyone about the uh, gilded coins. Keep them in a little pouch as well. You never know when you need to uh, gamble and slight a... Uh, Slight as a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I'm more than ready for a long rest. Okay. Yeah. So you guys uh, spend some time resting up. Uh, either of you going to be on watch or are you going to make the other people who aren't here be on watch for you? Definitely. I'm definitely going to make the others. Yeah, let's come watch. Okay. So you end up uh, getting to morning uh, of the 26th because uh, having to get through the uh, uh, time shifts because you got here uh, late at night. Mm -hmm. So morning comes up and everyone still seems to be alive. I don't know what all news. Um Okay. Well I mean I'm I'm kinda all for continuing in the direction that we've already been going. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, though this is also the time you can take to experiment using the teleportation in case you need to get somewhere in a hurry. If my oh, thinking no. would, my thinking would actually yeah, experiment with teleportation because if uh, if it goes poorly, you run back through, stone shape the hole closed, and then bam, it's out. So let's. Alright, um, let's give this a shot, trying to teleport. Um, what was the name of the town we stopped in, not last session, the one before? Uh, it was, uh, Selenica. Do we have all the letters? Well, it has no G or a V, so, yes, you do have all the letters. Alright, let's, uh... Give this a teleport. Everyone in the cells. Dimitri, especially you, in the cells. <laughs> well, now that you found the trap, they're all safe. Mm. You're welcome. Okay, so... Yeah, as you uh, go through it, uh, how does your character go about it? Carefully. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, Zadrus is going to start um, first by making sure he gets this. He's, everyone has agreed that the spelling is correct. And he's written down and the spell check his work before he submits it. Um, and is going to, using the very basic instructions that the Blood Elf has, Blood Elf has given him, um, tap the I to the letters in order. And I will give your character an intelligence check. Alrighty. Just a Blood slight intelligence check? Uh, Add your intellect bonus to the check. Twenty-one. Okay, you remember that the blood elf talked about him uh, saying where he was going as he was doing it. Alright, uh, Zayus is going to remember this uh, lovely little detail and say the name of the town. So this player has definitely not already forgotten after Okay, so you find yourself appearing on the edge of town with everyone uh, who was in the cells around you also appearing there. Is it safe to assume that everyone was in the cells? Like, we didn't leave someone yeah. behind. It's safe to assume you brought everyone just so in case something bad happened while you were gone. Fair. Alright. Well, we know it works. How do we get back? How does uh, Zedros believe it works to get back? Uh, Zedros is going to hold up the eye dungeon. <laughs> okay, he, he holds up the eye and says dungeon. He doesn't think that's effective. Back to the dungeon where I was before. I will give you an Arcana check. Okay. Uh, that is... 21 again. Okay, you believe that with a lot of magical devices that require you to spell things out, to go in one direction, sometimes require you to, to uh, do the reverse to go back. Did anyone catch the name of that place we just teleported out of? Well, the teleportation uh, was uh, uh, speaking it in, in normally to a location, speaking it in reverse would take you from that location, you think? Alright, let's do some Satana stuff. Um, yeah. Hold the eye up speak backwards okay 
as you speak backwards, uh, you feel everyone. Uh, uh, who do you want to take back with you? You, you get that sense. I'll I'll take everyone with me. More more so to keep an eye on Dimitri than to uh, as much as leaving him behind would be funny. Um, he is a quasi competent individual who could be helpful. In the as we continue on through the depths. Yep. And uh, so yes, you managed to bring them all back with you. As you're now uh, figured out, you you believe you've figured out the key to using this teleportation device built by the dwarves. But it never takes you inside a location. Seems to take you to the outskirts of it. Mhm. Mm So we're on the outskirts of the dungeon, or we're back in the cells? But it does take you back into the center of the dungeon. Okay. Well, now we've worked out how that works. And you don't believe they have to be within 10 feet of you for the return trip, or they don't come back. Got it. means you think you can use it to teleport from other locations once you know where they are by speaking that location in reverse. Perfect. Um, in that case, Xandrus is going to take out his notebook and start like jotting, you know, preparing some things of how to write, you know, getting some pages ready for how to write locations and a rough idea of how to pronounce them backwards. Just, just be ready. Alright, we're continuing on through door number six. You can. Let's do it. Okay, as you uh, spend uh, a little bit of time breaking through the uh, wall there, considering you had all um, uh, spent some time putting it together, Uh, so you'll seem to meander through some um, uh, tight corridors until you reach the base of a slope. Okay. Um, uh, hang on. So the base of the slope is going to start heading upwards. Yep. It's going to say yep. anything upwards. Uh, and you notice that uh, of the four skeletons, one of them has uh, a polished metal cylinder inscribed with two glyphs. Am I able to do a check as to what I think it might be? Uh, it seems to be a uh, scroll case of some sort. Um, and, and they, they just start moving up the, um, the path? No, they're just standing there. Uh, the Blood Elf says, uh, they were part of the group that captured her. Well. With mm -hmm. the, uh, undead wife that you destroyed. The white, as in the necromancer, or is this, is this something from previously? Uh, the necromancer was also a white, which your character didn't oh, yeah. at this point, because you never got a good look at him in the light. That's all good. Um, okay, uh, well, I mean, do we just destroy all these skeletons right here, right now? Can't see why not. I mean, they're kind of in our way. Kind of in our way is always enough for adventurers. Oh, absolutely. 
Okay, it doesn't um, take too much to beat them up. They don't seem to have had any uh, commands to defend themselves. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Fascinating. Okay. I wonder, so, I wonder, like, you know, would they just kind of kept... I mean, this is just speculation. Would they just kind of kept wandering back and forth now, um, doing very little because they didn't have anyone actually giving them specific commands? Well, they would follow the last order they were given. The, this, these skeletons were not the one you saw through the hole when you were... before you bricked up. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Mm-hmm. That one was a uh, large skeleton made up of many skeletons. Oh. Huh. Um, oh, sorry, I might have missed this. When we, when we came out through the, um, through the, the kind of chute or the disposal hole Through the hole disposal hole, you didn't see that skeleton with the car. It was gone. You had been doing stuff in the time being and it was still following commands. Yeah. What was there, was there only one way to go from that? There are multiple ways thing. to go, but... Uh, you do have the Blood Elf who could tell you which way she came from. Oh, and oh yeah, right. And the yeah. Uh, Dwarf yeah. who uh, is used to being underground and knows how to track. Yeah, cool. So between uh, the Elf who calls herself uh, Dekur and the Dwarf whose name is Maya, you would have a good chance of following things quite easily. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, having found the yeah. um, book of the necromancer earlier, you were able to also read his notes on what he was doing. Yeah. So and he, what was he bloody up to? Uh, he was experimenting on the blood elves uh, to see how uh, useful they were in uh, constructing uh, zombies, uh, skeletons, and uh, constructs. Oh, okay. He was looking to create a bone construct out of um, the blood elves. Yeah, okay. Do his notes indicate like what he thought the blood elves would like contribute to a bone construct like that? What like what would be so special about a bone construct made of blood elves? Well, considering uh, they come from a land beyond. Uh, time and comprehension in his notes uh, a civilization that died long ago the ability to um, uh, utilize uh, long dead bodies as far as he's concerned means that he expected them to be stronger than the normal people yeah look I don't agree with his methods but you know I appreciate his inquiring mind. Well, uh, all right. And well, you, you do have the um, polished metal cylinder that you uh, taken off the four crushed skeletons. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll have a look at that. You find it very hard to pick up as it is very slippery. Um, is is it like? Can I ascertain why it's so slippery? Give me a uh, Arcana check. Nineteen. Okay, so uh, it seems to have uh, what what you would expect to be oil or slipperiness uh, coating it. Mm. Which is a magical form of uh, grease. Okay. Uh, Am I able to well, I don't know, casting a third level spell to the spell magic on this seems silly, but, um... And if you do cast it on a magical item, you suppress it for a round, and then it comes back. 
What's that, sorry? If you do cast a spell magic on a magical item, it doesn't erase the magic permanently. Oh, oh yeah, okay. It stops instantaneous... Uh, it's, it stops ongoing effects of spells. Uh, it will bring down um, uh, concentration spells, but magical items, it will pause for a, a, normally a round, and then they will continue back on. Okay. Is there a way that I can just, like, kind of pick it up for the purposes of, like, storing it, but without, you know, with no intention of, like... Manipulating it for the time being. You can. Yeah, I might just kind of like wrap it in a, a, a some sort of material and stow it in my pack for the time being. Mm -hmm. Right, where well, I've got time to take a, I'll, I'll look at it. So later you can on. look at later. Mm Okay, so uh, the drow says it's uh, several days' journey to uh, where they stopped last before they were taken. Okay. Well, are we get um, are we get It would normally be several days' travel, but. Oh, it's not, isn't not, my not to her home. Uh, several days' travel to their last pit stop. Yeah. But Maya is connected to the Earth and can move us a lot faster than that. He says he can, but he doesn't recommend doing it in places you can't see. Okay. It it can cause uh, the rock to collapse on you. Alrighty. On the surface, it or a large cavern, it is a, a good ability to use. But in tunnels, he tries to avoid. Uh, damaging the terrain too much so you can't get back. He's used it to collapse tunnels in the past. Do we journey on now, or do we wait for, um, or do we wait for an opportunity to journey on with the others? Well, at this stage, you might say you you go back uh, to the keep, knowing what you're in for, and it might be a yeah. chance to go and get specialized gear. Yeah, your characters will mm -hmm. have a chance to buy stuff you might need or think you need before journeying down into the dark. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. Which means we might finish up early today so you get a chance to plan mm. what you want to do. But it does yeah, mean you're not tra having to make all the decisions without the others being there. Which can be hard sometimes because it's like, we wouldn't have done that. It's like, well, you weren't here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, so in that case, we might call it an end for the recording there and yeah, give right. you guys a chance to uh, look up what you'd like to get. So I'll put it on end things now. Mm -hmm.